Chemical Warfare Board at Edgewood Arsenal, Maryland, is testing the adaptation of the one quarter ton truck with trailer to give the 4.2 inch chemical mortar squad greater mobility. The 4.2 inch chemical mortar has been greatly improved by recent developments and lately has had high explosive added to the standard fillings of its ammunition, which greatly adds to its general utility. This 25-pound shell carries seven pounds of high explosives. This shell carries seven and one half pounds of white phosphorus, which besides producing an excellent smoke for screening, will cause serious casualties. Phosphorus is particularly effective against personnel who are dug in, as the burning particles of phosphorus lose their velocity very quickly and fall at a steep angle. The range of the mortar has been increased from 2,400 yards to 4,500 yards by chemical warfare experts, working with members of the National Defense Research Council at the Naval Powder Factory. The fuse is sufficiently sensitive to function on water impact. Recent maneuvers have demonstrated, however, that the present type of transportation, which is hand carts porte in two and one half ton trucks, is not sufficiently mobile and is very extravagant in its demands in manpower to feed up the ammunition to the mortars in action. As compared to this streamlined squad utilizing the quarter ton truck, the transportation of the present squad weighs over twice as much, has almost twice the cubicle displacement carries less ammunition, and takes more men to operate it, all of which are important factors in transporting units to overseas theaters of operation. During the experimentation prior to the tests of the transportation, the Chemical Warfare Board gave particular attention to the weight and balance of loads for the vehicle. This arrangement was found the most satisfactory when tested under conditions which might be expected in an overseas expedition. Now the demonstration. The crew sets the elevation on the mortar which is set up on a barge as simulated ship to shore movement is started. Ammunition is prepared with varying powder charges and stacked in the order that it is to be fired. The reduction in powder charges takes care of the decreasing range as the landing boats move toward the shore. The mortar opens fire at 2,000 yards. Rounds are spaced to cover the frontage assigned each mortar by the pilot of the barge, who steers toward the point where the next round is desired. As the troops approach the shore where the fire from the defenders' small arms and beach defense field guns would be effective, the defenders' observation for direct fire is blotted out. When the leading wave lands, mortar fire may be placed well back from the beach to interfere with enemy observation, slow down movement of supports and local reserves, and blind the fire of supporting weapons which may be placed in depth for the defense. The first test of the transportation is to carry the mortar and ammunition load off the boat and up this bank.
this test, an old gravel pit is used, which is similar to what might be encountered on the escarpments found on deserts, or terrain that has been fought over in siege warfare. This shows the great advantage of light transportation in rough cross-country going. A heavy prime mover would be really stuck. But here, the mortar crew manhandles this vehicle out of trouble. The vehicles are then tested over roads to determine the effect of carrying the loads at high speed. In case a vehicle is stalled, or it is desired to move the weapon without the trucks the last few yards to the emplacement, the trailer can be moved by hand. Trials are continued in hilly country following a rain to ascertain the hill climbing ability of the vehicle with this load on wet turf. Running the vehicles through the tangle of wild grapes and honeysuckle in the trees which fringe the soft, clay-bottomed Maryland streams gives a fair indication of how these vehicles with this load might perform in jungle warfare. Uh-oh. Again, the ability of the crew to help out the vehicle is shown. This action tested the securing of the mortar and ammunition loads and the effect of the balance of the load on the stability of the vehicle in rough going. Powder River, ride em, cowboy. At the conclusion, vehicles are thoroughly checked for distortion to ascertain if this load puts an undue strain on them, and load fastenings are examined to determine their serviceability. From these tests carried out as thoroughly as possible on the terrain available, it is believed that the mobility of chemical troops can be greatly improved by utilizing the quarter-ton truck and trailer. Also, that this can be accomplished with a reduction in personnel of at least 25% and the saving of about 50% in both weight and cubicle displacement of the transportation of the mortar squads. Chemical battalions so equipped and organized and which are now well trained in the technique of firing 4.2 inch chemical mortars by utilizing smoke and high explosive and render valuable support to attacking infantry, and particularly in theaters with poor roads, where the transportation of heavier supporting weapons is difficult. Such units, seasoned by actual battle, and with a reserve of lethal gas ammunition stored in theater depots, would be available to retaliate instantly in case the enemy, when he becomes hard-pressed, resorts to the use of gas. The knowledge by the enemy that this threat of retaliation by experienced troops exists may put off the day when gas will be used. Oh.